Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom, and today we're going to be doing a AutoWit video. Um, I did an intro video on how to install this, create your first script, so check that out. Um, but this one's going to touch a little bit farther into it as far as how to make a hotkey and some other basic commands like send, uh, opening stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos on AutoWit getting a little bit more advanced, definitely hit the like button. If we hit 30 likes, I'll do another video. And give me an idea in the comments. Maybe you want to see loops, variables, or whatever. Just let me know. <clears throat> uh, we will also be automating a little bit of Chrome, because I know that's one thing that people really tend to like. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to start with our hotkey. Uh, so to make our hotkey, really what we need to do is we need to make a global variable that equals false. And you'll see why that is in a minute. Uh, so we're saying global, uh, we're naming it, and it's false. So it's going to equal false. Uh, hotkey set, we're then going to put whatever our hotkey we want here. I'm using F1. Obviously, it can be whatever you want. Uh, and then when I push it, what is it going to uh, jump to? What function? So we just named our function start, which is down here. So ignore this for a second. It's going to, I push F1, it's going to jump down here. It's then going to change that global variable to true. The reason we're doing this is because when the code runs, it's running line by the line. It's creating the variable, it's creating the hotkey, and where to go. But then we're creating a loop here. <clears throat> so while one, sleep 20 seconds, or sorry, 20 milliseconds. Uh, this prevents the CPU from overheating. Um, so that's probably a good thing. You can change that to whatever you want, really. But 20 seems to be pretty good for this case. Um, if uh, the flag equals true basically which when you push f1 it's going to change the two to two it's then going to exit the loop so basically it's running line by line when it gets here it's going to stay here and it's just going to keep going and going until it hits f1 equals true then it exits and then pretty much anything below that it's going to run so here we're doing something simple a run command it's going to launch notepad um, dot exe obviously change this to whatever program uh, you're trying to launch uh, followed by whatever the extension is uh, if I wanted to run you know Chrome you could do chrome.exe if you wanted it to run a script or a video file you could do the name of the video dot mp4 uh, when wait active uh, that's what we're just doing because we're waiting to make sure it actually launched you know notepad pretty much launches instantly um, but some of the programs, it could take like 30 seconds to launch, so we want to make sure it's waiting to it to launch before we fully uh, start doing whatever it is supposed to do in the program. So here, very simple, send, a lot like auto hotkeys, obviously, uh, and in quotation and parentheses, whatever text you want to send. So here we're sending just hello world, pretty simple, straightforward. And then when close, and that's basically the equivalent of clicking the little X on the box. Um, here, it's untitled Notepad, uh, but as you see, we put a little asterisk here. Uh, the reason why we do that is because it does the name does change uh, when it does that, when you start typing. Um, so we do have that there, so just notice that sometimes programs, they can change their name as you're doing stuff, uh, the window title. Uh, then we're going to also wait for the window called Save, because when we click that, it's going to ask, do you want to save, yes, no, or cancel? Uh, then we're going to do send alt n, which is basically clicking the no button. Because um, I don't really need to save a bunch of these useless hello world scripts, but uh, obviously you can change that to alt y for yes, and then it'll ask you, you know, what do you want to name the file, which you can add more sends, or do it manually. It's really up to you. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead, let's launch this. Oh, and just uh, if you haven't watched my first video, when you save a autoit script uh, you name it and then do dot au3 uh, so just remember that so we're going to launch this it's now running it's obviously not doing anything i'm going to go ahead and press f1 there you go as you saw okay that was a little fast um but it did type in hello world after it launched <clears throat> the save thing popped up and very quickly it said no and didn't save it and closed the program um, something we can do just to kind of uh, slow it down for you guys to see a little bit better 
is we can, yeah, let's do this. We'll put a sleep here. We'll make it 2,000 milliseconds, which is uh, two seconds. And let's run that again. I'm going to go ahead, push F1. Hello world. And as you see, here's that menu that it's waiting for. And it just did the all in to close it and say no. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty easy. Uh, obviously, there's a huge difference uh, when it comes to creating a hotkey within AutoIt compared to like auto hotkeys. Auto hotkeys, you know, it's literally like F1. That's a hotkey. One line, only a few characters. Very easy. This is obviously a little bit more complicated. But when it comes to the actual like commands that do things, it's pretty much the same idea. Uh, just a little bit syntax uh, difference. Um, so if you know auto hotkeys, this part will be pretty easy for you. This part, you know, takes a few extra steps. But hey, just copy and paste. It's on their documentation on their website, so it's pretty easy to get. Or just pause the video, obviously. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get a little bit fancier here. So I'm not going to run through this, but this is uh, copied and pasted from the first script. Same thing, we're using F1 right here. Obviously, I condensed it a little bit better. Um, this is going to be more about Chrome. Um, so let me pull that up. <clears throat> here we go. So I just found this random form on the internet, and we're just going to and go down. Um, so yeah, let's get back to that. So one thing I guess to point out here, um, we're sending the word tab. Uh, the thing though here that you'll notice is difference is within these parentheses and quotations, we have these curly brackets with the word tab. That's saying don't send T-A-B. That's saying send the actual key on the keyboard called tab. Um, down here, same thing. Instead of typing the word down, we have it in curly brackets. It's actually going to click the down arrow on your keyboard. Uh, something to point out is if you don't have some of these buttons on your keyboard, it uh, doesn't matter. The operating system will still recognize it. Um, for example, if your keyboard just doesn't have arrow keys, this is still going to work. Um, so that's something to keep uh, in mind. We're going to sleep here uh, for 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because this way, while this looks really nice, it's very readable because I can see it literally step by step what it's doing. Another thing you can do is just have it in one line of code. So as you see, I'm just doing one send, but I have everything in here. I still have these in curly brackets. I still have the words being typed out and then, you know, tab down, tab, and then type comments. So you can do it in one line of code, but if you're not doing that many lines, I prefer this way, uh, you know, to each his own, do it whatever way you want. I just think this is easier to understand for people versus this, uh, but it is way less uh, code, obviously. So really depends on the situation and your preference of which one you want to uh, route you want to go. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and launch that auto -it script. All right, here we are. Nothing's really doing anything. I'm going to now press F1. Now, the reason I also put that 10 seconds in there is now I can go through here, clear this all out. Uh, there we go. And so as you saw, that was that single send right there that uh, went through and did all that. Um, so that's pretty, pretty easy. It's very fast. Obviously, I can make it tab down again to here and either push like space or enter depending what works on this continue button um, one thing to point out is i do have to make sure that the cursor is in the first field here um, because it is just doing kind of a manual type tab type tab uh, thing it's not going to know to target this uh, that's a later video where i can show you how to target uh, specific areas of the screen so that if when you load the page it's not automatically there it should get there so yeah, hopefully this is a great introduction. Uh, it's been a while since I've used AutoIt. I'm just kind of re-exploring it. And let me know what you guys think. Uh, comments, ask questions, feel free. And hopefully I can get back to you pretty quickly. And thanks for all for watching. I will see you on the next one. Bye.